to the Kent Lap Podcast. How do you think about politics and faith? I mean, I guess what's your, what do you believe to be true about it for you to get involved and have a desire to get involved and push the ball forward? Do you believe that eventually we can just sort of, Christians can kind of take it all over? Or do you believe that maybe not that, but no matter what, who, at any time, there needs to be people advocating for these things? What do you believe to be true about that, to have this desire to be involved in politics, um, in policy, as a believer in Christ? Yeah. I think there are probably at least three answers to that. I think uh, two of the things that prompt, prompt me, <clears throat> pardon me, Two of the things that prompt me to get involved uh, are, number one, seeing it done so poorly so often. Um, number two, seeing that um, even among our best theologians, our best public theologians, uh, people I would name and, and highly recommend to you, um, there's a gulf between the theology and the practice. So even our friends on Capitol Hill, who were like part of our religious tribe, who were Southern Baptists, who were kind of theology nerds, who loved reading, uh, you know, obviously uh, Russell Moore, but also a lot of the other um, evangelical heavyweights who are who write about church and politics. There's a gulf between what, uh, uh, even when they're reading and seeking out, you know, theologians to give them guidance. There's a gulf between the theory and the practice. Uh, so any opportunity I can have to smush those worlds together, uh, I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, what I started to notice among all of our public theologians, I, or most of the books I've read on public theology, um, and a lot of great ones, a lot of, a lot of that have taught me well, is how individualistic the application is. It's always for the Christian individual. Um, and I'm talking about kind of a, what I call an intellectual lineage of say C.S. Lewis and Francis Schaeffer and Chuck Colson, as far as like this, this orbit of Christian and Christians in the public square. Um, it kind of, once you, once I saw it, I kind of can't unsee it. Um, but there's very little for a local church as an institution to draw on. Hmm. You can give your members, um, you know, resources. Um, and our, our biblical ethicists have been doing tons of work for decades about what, what we Christians ought to believe or, or could, you know, ought to believe or ought to disagree about in good faith, um, on a whole host of issues, A to Z, but then say, given an issue, say a church comes to a conviction about abortion, say a church comes to a conviction about immigration. How then best as a local church advance that conviction in the public square. We don't have anything that instructs the church in a meaningful way. You have the rule book from the IRS. Mm -hmm. You have the Western individualism rule book, which says politics is my thing. Don't touch it. Don't, don't talk to me about my political, don't challenge my political views. Um, in a way that we you know, rebel even against our pastors, even when our pastors might say gently, you maybe ought to think about this a little differently. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's my politics. Mm -hmm. Um, so those were the things I was, I was seeing. Yeah. Um, as far as what it ought to be, I think, I think the goal is, or the theme that we ought to take on is a faithful and fruitful political witness. Faithful in that it's faithful to doctrine, faithful to scripture, um, faithful to our, the local body. Your body might be divided on issues A, B, and C, but might be united on X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And just because you're divided on A, B, and C doesn't make, make you, uh, ought to be no commitment to be mute on issues X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Um, just like, just like certain ministries feel a passion to get engaged on the soup kitchen or the orphan and widow, widow ministry or, um, addiction recovery. Not every church does the same mission, right? A lot of them do the similar. A lot of those ministries, you can more or less go to a Christian bookstore or online uh, and buy kind of the ministry in the box, and it'll show you how to do this faithfully. Um, that's r appropriate for the local church. Christian counseling, we do this. Christian education, right? We all mm -hmm. build this on, you know, incorporating sound principles from the from the world, but rooting it in this. Ultimately, we do this for everything else. We don't mm -hmm. do it for politics. Interesting. Um, and so, faithful and fruitful, or faithful in that respect to doctrine and to the local body. Um, in the, in the grander denominational, um, context, it would be the ERLC faithful to doctrine, faithful to the consensus of the convention. 
So some of this is on backwards engineering from a denominational perspective to a local church. Um, faithful and fruitful. Fruitful is important because one of the, the most common question I got to anybody who visited our DC office, pastors, church leaders, um, Southern Baptists who are just passing through on vacation, student groups was, how effective are you? It's a great question. We should hope to be effective uh, in um, representing um, our particular body of believers in the public square. Um, I think a better, but the problem with the effective question is you immediately get drawn into um, issues of pragmatism, um, which might be from time to time wise, prudential, strategic. But pragmatism can never guide the Christian church, right? Um, we've seen errors on pragmatism for uh, church growth movements. We've seen errors in pragmatism for missions. Uh, we see errors in just evangelism in general. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go purely pragmatic, that can get you into all kinds of terrible territory. Hmm. If it's fruitful, number one, you're trying to be effective, but you're also mindful that your reason for being there in the public square is not only to be effective policy walks in our case. Your reason for existing in the public square is to provide a witness to the kingdom of God. And so the how tends to matter. Mm-hmm when you engage the public square, whether it's on social media or whether it's on Capitol Hill, because people are watching, mm -hmm. whether they're watching on social media, whether they're watching you on a, being a talking head on, on the news channel, whether they're watching you in a meeting on Capitol Hill. Members of Congress are watching, staffers are watching, non-Christian NGOs are watching, and how you do what you do in your local community as a local church also matters. Mm -hmm. and I think that component about how we engage politics we just don't have. Yeah. Very few people have developed that.